We have also, so much by the way, confidence the in the going. talking up, uh, above in the nest. If anyone does want to go and, and take a look at that. Here we go. Elon's connecting up. Hey, guys. Hey, Elon. How are you doing? What's going on? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, it's, uh, you know, um, yeah, a lot going on. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, yeah, anything you want to ask me? Elon, we want to get a sense of your uh, thought process for growth rates and how do you uh, overall contextualize it or conceptualize it from uh, Tesla standpoint for unit growth. You you probably have your pulse on the entire global, uh, you know, macroeconomic aspects as well as demand for your product, right? So yeah. one aspect was that, what we were discussing. And Elon, the second aspect was on Twitter side, it seems like you have kind of gotten to a good grip of the situation. What's your next step? So those are the things which we were bouncing around our ideas on. Um, so it would be great if you could give a couple of uh, thoughts of your own. Sure. Well, on, I mean, on the Twitter front, um, I mean, it's just, I need to sort of deep dive on Twitter to see, uh, make sure the company didn't go bankrupt next year. Um, so that, that was really, you know, just required, I don't know, uh, about, about a month of intense work. As I was still doing Tesla work during that time, as well, by the way. Um, and I think it's, it, it's really Tesla has not skipped a beat um, on execution. The Tesla team is doing an incredible job uh, across the board in execution. Um, so it's really, you know, can't say enough good things about the Tesla team uh, and, and the progress that's being made in terms of fundamentals. Um, with respect to, uh, you know, the, the, with respect to sort of global, global demand, I, I just do, do want to really emphasize, uh, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that this is the only reason, but it is uh, in, uh, it's certainly the primary reason. Uh, is that uh, when interest rates increase, the cost of a car increases along with it. So the, the, the radical interest rate changes that have occurred have increased the price prices of all cars, actually new and used. Uh, I mean, you can see like what a bath uh, Carvana and CarMax are taking. Um, this will be true of of, all, of anything bought with debt. Um, so so there's, that, that's on the demand side is, is the the interest rate changes by the Fed, and then everyone's basically forced to follow the Fed. Um, so you've got uh, Europe raising interest rates, even Japan uh, raising interest rates. Uh, so uh, now, the, and, and in my view, um, I've, said, I've said a bunch of this already uh, on, on Twitter. In my view, we are already in deflation. Um, so, and, and the Fed is just dealing with old data. So the so then if 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 I'm correct that we're already in deflation, the real rate of return of T bills is insanely high. It, it's arguably above the long term rate of the S and P five hundred. It's, it's sort of it's arguably above six percent real real rate of return. With you right, like from a macroeconomic perspective, you know that's why growth in tech stocks compress when interest rates are going up. But you know taking that out of the equation, and I think most of us reasonable investors up here you know, understand that. And I, I found it funny when you made that comment to Ross the other day as well. But, you know, taking that out of the equation, do you really feel, you know, we've talked about the 50% growth rate and, and I find that that to be really an arbitrary number, you know, whether it's 40 or 45. Yeah. Do yeah. you really think Tesla um, is going to sustain that growth rate in the next couple of years still? <clears throat> well, so I, I'm just laying out the what I see as, as just, the this is this is my best guess at the future it's not like i have like some incredible crystal ball that is an exact predictor of anything so with all appropriate caveats uh just you know this, but the 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 reality is um if we are uh if we are in a recession i think we are in a recession and i think 2023 is going to be quite a serious recession and it, it's it's going to be, I, in, in my opinion, comparable to twenty, to, to comparable to two thousand nine. I don't know if it's going to be a little worse or a little better, but I think it's, it's in my view, likely to be comparable. Um, uh, and uh, that means demand for uh, any sort of any kind of optional discretionary item, especially if it's a big ticket item, will be lower. 
Um, and the and then with the Fed increasing rates, which is really this is quite unusual. This this is like when you're heading to a recession, you should be reducing uh, uh, the Fed rate, not increasing it. Um, so that amplifies the difficulty. So now you have uh, sort of structural demand, which is uh, obviously going to be lower in a recession, and you've amplified the effective cost of a car uh, because they're almost all bought with debt. Um, so. Uh, so, so now you, so this, you get a double whammy is what I'm saying. Um, so now, so then, 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 the, then the obvious choice in that scenario is, do you want to grow unit volume? Uh, in which case, uh, you'll have to adjust prices downward. Um, or do you want to grow at a lower rate or go, go steady? It's, it's sort of a choice there. Um, you know, my, my inclination would be to still grow, you know, as, I mean, my, 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 my bias would be to say, like, OK, let's let's grow as fast as we can without putting the company at risk, um, which would mean, you know, in that in that scenario, profits would be low to negative during a recession, provided the cash position is OK. I think that's still the right move long term. Um, and the so. Because there's also something that Tesla possesses that other car companies do not, which is extremely fundamental. That is that the cars are upgradable to, to autonomy. Um, and so, and, and, and arguably, an, an autonomous car is worth many times what an, a non-autonomous car is. So even if your margins are extremely low uh, in selling the car, it's, it's the subsequent upgrade to it being autonomous uh, is worth a lot, so and that's just that, that's something that no other car company can do. Uh, is only Tesla uh, can do that. So I so I think that like so, so that, like so that uh, you know so, so like if you say like you know, like well um, I mean I stand by my my prediction that uh, long term um, you know that 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 Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. I'm 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 actually fairly confident that that will be the that will be what happens. Um, what what I what I cannot predict because there are many things outside of my control is what will be the uh, the valuation along the along the way there. So that that is subject to the uh, the stock you know the subject to a lot of emotional elements on the stock market. Subject to the macroeconomic conditions, um, but if say like long term, you know, I, I would say Tesla's probably, in my my best guess, most valuable company in the world in less than five years. Hey, Elon, uh, in terms of existing manufacturers, Actually, so wait, three aces. Oh, sorry, sorry, I want to. I apologize. I don't know how much time we're going to have, and I want to make sure Omar has a chance to get a question in here. Uh, I, I know a lot of people in here want to hear uh, any thoughts or anything like that, Omar. Uh, I apologize for cutting you off, but uh, do you have anything? Well, yeah, you know, I, I think I definitely agree with Elon. I've been using the FSD beta. It's been driving me all around L.A. with no takeovers. But, you know, just to give voice to a lot of people, Elon, you know, you've blamed sort of the macro environment. I think a lot of people don't understand the economy. But what would you say to people who say that, oh, you know, Elon bought Twitter and he had to sell his shares and he hasn't been doing anything at Tesla. He hasn't been doing his job and uh, he's turning people off with his political tweets. They're all canceling their Tesla orders and this is all his fault and he won't acknowledge it. He's just blaming it on macro. Um, well, the thing is that, uh, you know, if you, if you look at sort of uh, automotive demand, Almost anywhere in the world, it's 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 problematic. Almost any anywhere in the world, and no, and and not everywhere cares about my political uh, comments. So, uh, so that I that, I think this is of of really of minor minor impact. Um, really, it's it's this is not. Um, I really just don't think this is a bit a, a significant factor. Yeah, um, I completely agree. So, I mean, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I, you know, so, um, yeah, the, yeah. 
I don't think it's a significant factor. I, but I, the, I, I, but the, the thing I just, you know, um, like, like the thing that like I think most people are just not realizing is just how I keep I sound like a broken record on this, but how big of an impact a Fed rate uh, level is of of this of you know on the order of five percent is if we are in a deflationary environment, which I think we are in. In in we autos, we are that, in a deflationary environment. And objectively, we are. And you yeah. know, you know, in twenty twenty one, we sold you know. Uh, you might cut out there, I think. Yeah, you cut out. Oh, you, um, as well. Elon, Elon, one one comment I wanted to ask you on Twitter, Elon specifically. You know, the other the other day you tweeted about, you know, if you were to step down as CEO, you'd stay on as head of software and servers. And you know, from my perspective, I've been a Tesla investor since 2015, Elon. And like, you know, my view of of you at Tesla is that like a lot of your excellence comes from your vision and your ability to delegate talent. So I guess my my question to you would be. And, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm in the school of thought of some people that believe that you're not working on Tesla and SpaceX. I believe that you are. And I think that people just have a misrepresentation by reading your feed that you're not. But, you know, that being said, why is it that you feel, I guess, at this juncture that you can't delegate, uh, you know, a handful of talent that you trust who share your vision to run the Twitter side while you focus on some of the bigger, bigger things elsewhere? I'm just curious to hear your opinion on that. Um, I mean, as I said at the beginning of the call, um, the, you know, I had to have a, a sort of a short term, uh, you know, month or so of just getting the insane Twitter costs under control of Twitter, which is go flat bankrupt. Um, so n now that is uh, basically almost entirely done. Uh, and then I've got to make sure that the engine of engineering at uh, Twitter is working. Uh, so... Uh, Otherwise, we, tw Twitter cannot develop new features. But in, in the grand scheme of things, the amount of uh, actual uh, cognitive load that Twitter represents is is low. I mean, it, it is a, a much simpler problem than than uh, Tesla or SpaceX, obviously by by a country mile. Um, so, uh, I would say it was, it was like high cognitive load for about a, about a month. At this point, it is a moderate cognitive load. A month from now, it'll be it'll be I think low. So, and and, there, and, and if I look back and say like, okay, what, what are actions that could have been taken? What, what was there something that that I didn't I failed to do at Tesla that that could have been done and would have improved our execution? I literally cannot think of a single thing. Elon, can you talk yeah, about? Yeah, this is really great to hear you say. Um, I I think. A lot of investors have sort of wanted to hear you say that and just reaffirm that you're committed to Tesla. I think those of us who know you know that your commitment to Tesla hasn't changed, but the perception people see on the internet can be very skewed sometimes. Elon, can you talk about the issues in, in China and, and outlook on SAR? I know, you know, Tesla has been able to sell an increased penetration market share in EVs for many years, but, you know, now that it's at a larger scale, you know, global auto SAR was at 66.7 million units in 2021. U.S. SAR is at 14.1 million. Outlooks for next year in the U.S. and overseas are, are on the decline. And prices are also declining. Like you said, I agree, we're in an auto deflationary environment when it comes to prices. Yeah. Can, yes, objectively so. Yeah. Can, can Tesla potentially, how, you know, when it comes to unit sales, can Tesla continue to increase unit sales in this type of environment? Um, or will it have to provide more incentives or, you know, how are you planning to, uh, you know, this macroeconomic environment is pretty challenging. How do you plan to address some of these, you know, these, these issues that are outside of your control? Um, I, I'm just hoping like factually, the, if, if, if you, you know, since the, since the vast majority of cars are bought on, on credit, the interest rates are a high interest rate, high real interest rate. Uh, is literally just like increasing the price of the car. So in order to keep demand constant, um, uh, you would have to therefore decrease the price of the car. Uh, it's the only that, that's if, if you want to keep demand constant, and if you want to increase demand, you have to decrease the price of the car further. This is just uh, this is like econ 101 stuff. So that's that's the situation we have. It's kind of blowing my mind that the Fed has raised rates so high. Uh, they're just dealing with old information. 
um, and it's it's like basically like the economy right now is like a car, you know, driving around on a cliffside road, uh, and uh, the the Fed is driving it by looking out the rear rear view, view, view mirror. In fact, it's not even looking at the rearview mirror. It's looking at a video taken of, of the out of the rearview mirror that's like three months old. <laughs> so obviously, this is not a good way to drive a car in a, in a windy cliff road. Um, so they're just very old school and very traditional. Um, and, uh, and 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 I think we're in for a hard landing. Uh, that's that's based on the it's. Yeah, um, like I so said, you have to think like, it, it, like for, for argument's sake, if the, and for, like, if 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 you have a risk-free rate like that that is higher than the return on the S and P, which is which obviously has fluctuations, why would anyone have stock? I mean, we're buying bonds. We're buying preferreds. We're you know at eleven, twelve percent yields. You, know, you can buy the T-Flow. Everyone on here, there's ETFs. They're floating rate instruments. You can easily earn you know, high single digits, double digit return in very low risk securities today. So I 100% agree with you. Why would you buy residual interest equity securities in risky companies? I 100% agree with, with your thought process. In an environment like this, now we don't expect rates to stay here forever, but it's a good question right. everyone should ask themselves. Yeah, I mean the the, the 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 exactly, and so so like probably what's going to happen. Um, it sounds like based on the Fed signaling is they'll increase uh, rates by another fifty basis points next month, uh, and then my guess is they'll. <clears throat> again, this is I felt like I have a hotline to Jerome Powell. You know, if somebody knows Jerome Powell, please tell him to stop raising interest rates. This was insane. Um, I feel like you could get him on the phone if you really wanted. I to think so. At this point, um, is he allowed to talk to me? Sure. Well, he does have a Twitter sure, account. I'm pretty sure he's allowed sure, to talk, he's to talk to business leaders. Totally. Let's get okay. this set up. Let's do it on Twitter Spaces. That would be a conversation. That'd be sick. <laughs> Elon <laughs> versus the Fed on Twitter. Twitter's <laughs> valuation would pop on that too, right? <laughs> You'd get a whole new batch of list listeners. Well, it's, it's the whole the whole market, you know. Uh, but like like I said, the thing that to appreciate about like uh, interest rate increases is is the double whammy effect of if you're looking at a, at a stock price is higher interest rates will reduce the uh, profitability of of any company selling something that is dependent on the price of debt, um, like because cars are bought with leases and loans, so uh, people look at their monthly payment, and so you you have basically. Uh, uh, demand slash profitability issue with higher interest rates and then on which which then re reduce the profitability obviously and then in general the the valuation of, of all equities drops with increasing the real interest rate that's the double whammy effect that i'm talking about um now, now the, the, the this this will not last forever they'll they'll i, mean, I don't know hopefully they'll see like okay this they've gone too far and then start lowering the rate and then it's a question of well, at what rate do they lower the rate? How long does it take them to get the rate back to something sensible? Elon, um, on that point you made earlier about, you know, the the raising, you know, the higher rates, obviously making cars effectively more expensive. You know, I agree with that. Obviously, it's a pretty basic notion. But I, I'm just curious, and we've talked about this before, and I know Gary has mentioned this before. What's your view on Tesla's path to the $30,000 vehicle or the next vehicle? I know you said that you guys had kind of tabled that last time you spoke about it. Um, have you guys brought that back up? Is it something you're considering again now, um, especially in this environment? I I'm just curious. Um, yeah, I mean, look, this is like not the forum to make product announcements, uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we're obviously uh, want to make more affordable cars. So, um and the, the the Tesla product pipeline is awesome. I think Tesla's got the most exciting uh, product roadmap of any company on earth by far. Um, so that's uh, you know, and the proof will be in the pudding. So, hey, Elon, uh, can I can I ask? I mean, I'm just connecting some of the the previous points together. I'm a ten year owner of Tesla and ten year investor as well. Um, just connecting some of the previous points together. When I looked at the 08, 09 inflation. Uh, uh, recession. 
Um, in 07, in U.S. auto sales, we're at 16 and a half million cars. 08, it went down to 13.1. And then 09, it went down to 10.4. So if you go from 07 to 09, there was like a 36% drawdown in U.S. I'm just looking at U.S. auto sales. And then, yeah. and then you look at what, what Tesla is projected to do this year in the U.S. in terms of EV as a percent of auto. It's going to grow 50% this year go from 4.7% penetration of total auto to 7%, which is like a 50% jump in the U S and it's going to do about a hundred percent jump in China year over year. So these are unbelievable growth numbers of EV as a percent of auto. And the thing I don't think we've layered in is that Tesla has increased prices, even with this, this inventory uh, reduction, the last couple of days, like the model Y I think is still, $19,000 $19,000 higher than it was in the early part of Q4 uh, 2021. So long story short, if you overlay like, you know, Tesla's EV adoption growth and you overlay like what happened in the last recession, which was pretty gnarly, it feels like there's, and with, in the fact that prices have gone up so much and commodities have come down so much over the last, I won't say so much, but commodities are starting to come down. How do you feel Tesla is positioned with all those factors in mind? I think Tesla's positioned better than any other car company by far. Um, and like I said, the the the, the fact that the, the vehicles are capable of, of autonomy um, with a software update is gigantic, a gigantic thing. Um, no one else has that. So... Um, and we also, you know, are starting from a position where our uh, gross margins are higher than I think anyone else, which gives us more room to lower them and and, and maintain or increase demand. So uh, now, does that mean that the profits are a pretty picture in in a in like a two thousand nine style re- recession? Of course not. It's, that's just not physically possible. And there's no and, and there's no there's there is it is there's no human on earth or you know me or anyone else who could change that hey hey elon real, I'm, I'm an emergency yeah, real, real quick. guy um yeah in africa yeah i, I want to jump in here quickly uh, i appreciate it. elon i want to throw you out there a quick question and then i'll throw it over to gov and then i want to hear gary if he has any thoughts uh but elon we're on twitter spaces right right now is Twitter Spaces something that's kind of core to you and, and Twitter and, and the long term of it? Uh, it, it? Is it important to you? Um, Twitter, Twitter Spaces seems to be, you know, t- Twitter Spaces, you know, um, I think is uh, a great forum for uh, the, the public in general. And I think it's quite useful to get the message out, um, obviously. Um, it's, you know, Basically, being on Twitter Space and then being able to receive the, 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 the Twitter comments, the written comments at the same time, I think, is Twitter at its best. Yeah, um, I would definitely echo. All right, can I stir up some drama yeah. here? Because we've got Ross Gerber in the room, and Ross has been saying Elon's doing a shitty job, he's not there, and he wants to run for the board of directors. Ross, would you like to confront Elon right now while we're in this space yeah, for, for the for, audience's first of all, entertainment? That's not what I've been saying at all. I'm probably one of the biggest fans of Elon of anybody here. And I'm super grateful for the effort and success that he's put into making Tesla successful in SpaceX. And all I want to know is what's going on. And that's all I've asked from the Tesla board, too, is like, I just want to back at Tesla. I just miss you, Elon. Like I, I love Twitter and I love what you're doing with Twitter and, and I support it a hundred percent and I've invested in it and I would invest more, but I just like, I really, I really think there's a huge community of people who just want to know, like, what's the next move? Like, how long is this going to be? Like, how much more stock are you going to sell? These are basic questions that I think are fair to ask. Yeah, I'm not selling any stock for I don't know a quarter minimum eighteen to twenty four months. So you can count on me like no no stock sales till probably I don't know twenty five twenty twenty five or something. I I basically I've you know it was like 
you know, I needed to sort of sell some stock just to make sure like there's like powder dry that, you know, uh, if, to account for a worst case scenario. Totally. Um, yeah. I, I and so that's, that. that's, yeah. Yeah. But I want to buy, uh, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not selling any, any, yeah. It's like, I just don't want to get whacked the next day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so I, I mean, you still have my commitment that I, I won't uh, sell stock until I don't know, probably two years from now. I, uh, definitely not next year under any circumstances. Um, and, um, you know, I probably not the year thereafter. So I, I, you know, I just really want to make sure that I'm somewhat paranoid having gone through two really intense receptions. <laughs> I totally in, understand in, that. In, that's yeah, great like, news. Thanks for making yeah, that statement. So, so can, that means a lot can you just answer? Can you answer my other question though? Like, as far as what you're thinking as a timeline, as far as like when you're going to be back in Austin? Yeah, I mean, I was I I, I was back in Austin just last week, but but to, you know, Tesla's still primarily in the Bay Area, and I'm in the Bay Area. That's right, I, right, I, I right. I, like, the, the, like literally, there's not a single uh, important like, like Tesla meeting that I've missed this entire time. Um, so it's not like you know I, I'm totally missing an action. That's that's just that's 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 just not the case. I, I agree, I, like, but I'm, maybe it's the optics I, yeah. a little bit. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's it's like sure. it's like an optics thing, and and like and like a lot of things you're doing on Twitter, I'm like super ex- like it needed to be done, like you know how I feel about the people who are running Twitter before. And I'm, I think you're doing a great job with the product, not, not to mention too, although it's not an easy task by any means, but I just think the perception is like, Oh, he's doing this now and he's not doing that. And maybe the media is doing that, but it's just something you should be aware of. And that perception is a reality to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, Twitter is obviously like mega catnip, if you, if you cross catnip with crack, that's what Twitter is. <laughs> a catnip crack. Um, so, like, any tiny little thing of Twitter is, like, front page news. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's like, it, it's like uh, we, we, you know, we, if we have, like, some you know, mid-level person left Twitter, front page news. Right. Like, what the? It was ridiculous. Um, so, uh, you know... Um, so it's, it's just it's going to get like outsized att- attention, um, but it's not like, like there's just literally. If I think like, is there anything that I could have done uh, in the past like few months that would have helped with Tesla's execution? I literally can't think of anything. Right. So, um, and there was not a single important meeting that I missed. It's uh, we're making great progress on future product developments. Um, and it's really just like I, I think you know there's going to be some uh, macro drama that's that's higher than people th- currently think, or higher than most people think. Um, and uh, it's hard to predict exactly. You know, it's, economic prognostication is uh, fraught with difficulty. But uh, you know, if if we do have another two thousand nine situation. Um, that that that's it's, you know the stock prices of everything is going to be lower, um, and, uh, and 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 then I think it, it's arguable that stock prices of of any anything that's bought with debt will you know like not not a state but like it's sort of you know it's like you know uh, buying sort of food at the, at the grocery store people will still buy that but because but things that are bought with debt like like basically housing and and cars are going to be the, the two biggest right. Uh, are, are really going to just uh, get disproportionately impacted, um, but it, but then it's sort of it's a bit, if you say like that's why I was trying to emphasize like but from a long term standpoint like this is there's a natural economic cycle that happens and frankly we're overdue for a, a, a recession. Um, it's like shocking that we haven't had like a serious recession since you know or, um, in, or recession in any mean, meaningful sense of the word since 2009. That's like 13 years. Like wow. Um, so this is like it, it just economic cycles are just the way the economy works. Like you have up, up and down cycles, and it's just the way things go. Um, so we're somewhat overdue for that. Um, I mean, I, I was talking to like um, Brett Johnson, who's the CFO of SpaceX, and he was telling me about uh, when he was at uh, Broadcom in 2000. And Broadcom was a you know Broadcom's a, a good company making 
you know, good products. It's, it's not like pets.com. So, uh, and, 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 and I was like, I was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild how, you know, when there's like, when, when there's panic in the stock market, like how, how much, you know, even high quality company stocks can drop. And he was like, yeah, when he was at Broadcom, the, the stock dropped 97%. I was like, "Wow, that's a lot." That subsequently recovered to, I think, above you know its previous all-time high. But you know, when there's extreme panic in the markets, like things can go to like ridiculous levels. I'm not saying that they will, but they they, they this is this is a thing that has happened in the past. Um, that's why I'm, I've been just been very much encouraging people to avoid buying stock on margin um, and just uh, uh, avoid. Mm-hmm. Avoid margin debt because you just don't know if when if there's going to be some panicky situation in the stock market. Um, so well, we got the panicky situation in the stock market before we got the recession. It seems, um, but it seems like the market is clearly pricing in what you're talking about. And I don't disagree with your viewpoint on Jerome Powell. And I would love to get him on a Twitter Spaces to be honest. Yeah, um, cool. but I also think that Tesla has a certain level of recession proofness because buying a Tesla does cost cut your cost of living from an ICE vehicle. And I also think, and maybe you, you can confirm this, that your margins are probably increasing now that the supply chain issues and a lot of the commodity prices are decreasing, which can allow Tesla the lower prices to continue to sell more cars without hurting margins. Um, so I just want, you know, like I think Tesla will will weather, the, you know, what I think is an upcoming economic storm, maybe better than than any company. Uh, For sure. Uh, but you know, apart from like, if, like I said, if if, if a company's like making like bread or something, they'll probably be, you know, they're like <laughs> relatively recession proof. Um, but uh, you know, compared to any any company making large. Co- complex manufactured objects that are bought with debt, Tesla I think will be do, will do relatively better than anyone. Um, but that that doesn't it's sort of like if you're a ship in the storm, even if you have a really high great ship, it's, you're still going to get bashed by the storm. You know, so yeah. Um, the, the the and there is uh, with respect to to cost structure, somewhat of a lag effect um, where uh, the the supply chain takes a, a, a there's latency in the supply chain, so the supply chain uh, takes will, will take a bit longer to reduce costs than um, than than we'd like because it's this I don't know called six months of latency in the right, supply. Right, right, right. So Elon, on the on the supply chain side, Elon, just just a question. You know, I'm I'm a, a lithium investor myself, and I know you've made many comments on lithium refining and, and processing in the last few months. What's been your I guess anecdotal view from Tesla's perspective? Um, into the end of this year on, on battery metals prices? And, and do you have a view on battery metals prices uh, for next year as well? And any kind of commentary on how that's affected you or any kind of strategy that Tesla's implementing um, to stay ahead of, of the battery metal uh, pricing curve, if you will? Yeah. So, you know, again, I, I keep emphasizing like all these things need to be taken with a grain of salt because I'm not, I don't have like some... Of course. You know, of course. Yeah, I understand we're asking you to speculate. I yeah. Just... It's, it's, it's like... Uh, if I had a perfect crystal ball, you know, that'd be great, but I don't, um, the, the, the price of battery grade lithium is obviously insane. Um, and it's constrained primarily at the, uh, lithium refining level, more, much more so than at the mining level. Um, and that's why Tesla's building a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi. Um, so, uh, is is really to, to get get out away from that that choke point of or diminish the 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 cho- the, the, the the lithium refining uh choke point this, this like lithium is extremely common it's everywhere basically it's it's not like oil like oil is much more localized and rarer than than lithium lithium is basically so, everywhere Elon, on that facility you guys are looking to erect, erect in corpus you know um, I've done a lot of work on, on lithium refining and processing. And I mean, typically those facilities, you know, even with optimal CapEx are taking a minimum of seven years to get <laughs> to, to maximum. Um, so are you guys looking at a shorter timeline? Are you Have you guys kind of broken that mold? Yeah, I mean, seven years is insane. I, no, I mean, we're, I, at least maybe we're diluted, but 
we're we're aiming to be having having have meaningful volume out of that refinery in like two years. Yeah, that's impressive. That's wildly impressive. And then you guys, I'm sure you guys will make make way on that. And is that the only project you guys have considered so far, or is there? And I know a lot of this is speculation, but just curious. Well, we're also doing um, the cathode refining, um, but that's that's like pretty obvious because it's like there's a giant building on the other side of the, the Giga Texas fa- factory. That, that that giant building is the cathode refinery that that we've been building. So, um, awesome. Awesome. That, 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 and that's obviously for, for nickel-based cathodes. Uh, um, so, um, so, so we're like I think taking the steps that uh, are necessary to enable you know very high volume uh, output of vehicles electric vehicles and and stationary battery packs um, and to to reduce our de- uh, dependence uh, on the supply chain um, so like I think we're making the the, the, the small strategic moves here um, and, uh, and and, and I, but you know as far as like I, I think we pro- depending on like what happens with total automotive demand or especially electric vehicle demand next year, especially in China, where, where they make the most number of EVs. I think, I think we probably see some reduction in the cost of battery materials. Um, yeah. Um, Elon, on, you mentioned earlier on the asset yeah. price conundrum, you know, when it comes to cars and autos and homes, the same applies to companies, right? If you think about, Charter, for example, it has an earnings yield of 10%, but it has a debt yield of 7%. It used to be 4%. So corporate buybacks are less attractive in this environment. Would you agree that it makes more sense to reinvest in Tesla than it does to buy back stock? Well, <clears throat> I mean, we're actually, I'd say, in, in, we're applying uh, capital at pretty close to the fastest rate that we can spend capital and not be wasteful. So we're not like saying, oh, you know, let's like uh, not spend money on important long-term projects. Like I just mentioned like the lithium refinery and the the cathode refinery, um, which which are important for long-term, you know, high growth. So we are making these investments and we, uh, you know, I can't sort of say too much about this, but we are close to picking a uh, location for an, another gigafactory. Um, um, but I, we, we want to be sort of careful and deliberate about that. Um, so that, so we're, there's, there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of good things that are happening. Um, the, but, but like, I, I think the smart move, is to take is like we like we are coming in we're coming into this like recession I think in, in a very strong position like we don't have any debt we've got you know uh, on the order of twenty billion dollars of, of you know, cash and cash equivalents um, and that's a pretty great position to be going into uh, stormy waters with um, but but like I think we want to make sure that like let's just see like how stormy are these waters. And um, are we talking about a mild recession, moderate recession, severe recession? We don't know yet. So I think it's it's not like we just want to keep our, our powder dry uh, and see what you know what's what what kind of um, economic environment are we going to see in 2023? Um, and um, it, you know the, the 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 board is very open to doing a buyback, but I think it's like we just want to. It, it, it like it wouldn't be smart to do a buyback, and and then uh, discover that the recession is like I don't know for our, for argument's sake worse than two thousand nine. And I'm like and then I'm like that was foolish to have you know used up cash reserves uh, for for a buyback in in, in in the face of a severe recession. So we just need to kind of see what is the nature of the recession and. Um, and and then if and then it, like if, if it's looking like hey we're doing okay um, from a cash standpoint and uh, the the stock price is like absurdly low, then you know at, at least my vote on the board would be to sort of do a buyback. Uh, that but that's you know that's subject to the rest of the board's opinion as well. But 
but my vote would be to do a buyback. If once we ha are able to properly calibrate the scale of the recession um, and our and just make sure that Tesla is, is is healthy and we're not, you know, spending cash reserves and put, putting the company at risk, um, you know, that, that that would be my concern. Uh, on the people Twitter, like Twitter who love Tesla, for, yeah. Sorry, well, yeah. I go first. So I'm popping after you. Yeah, I mean, for people like me who love Tesla and love the products, it's just. You know, I'm really glad that Tesla got profitable when it did, because if it had to go through the storm when it was sort of where it was in 2018 or 2019, I mean, oh, it might not have made it through it. Yeah. So it's, I'm you dead. know, really to tremendous credit of the management that we've gotten to this place where we're profitable and we don't have to worry about Tesla going under with this storm. You have the startups like Rivian and Lucid who are just burning cash like crazy. Yeah. Terrible situation for them. The legacy automakers, they're not in a great situation. Correct. Tesla is launching FSD beta. They're doing pretty well overall. They're in a better position than pretty much any of their peers. And that's, I think, a huge credit to you and the rest of the Tesla team. Let me tell you, the Tesla team is kicking ass. And like honestly, to, to use an, an anachronistic analogy, Tesla is firing on all cylinders. Um, so it's the, the actual you know execution of the company is, is i think outstanding um the team's doing a kick ass job um so the it's like like just you know um i guess like warren um you know what's that warren buffett's got a lot of great sayings you know uh, <laughs> um but, but the you know cause this is a sort of thing where like like i you know i suspect warren buffett's going to be buying a lot of stock next year, you know, um, because the, if a company has like very strong fundamentals, but then the, the, the market is, is doing some short term panic situation, obviously that's the, the, the right time to buy stock. Um, and, uh, like, like I stand by my prediction that Tesla will be the most valuable company in the world. Um, I, I can, I'm actually pretty confident that would be the case. Um, but I just can't predict with accuracy the stock price between now and then. On the yeah, Twitter X Tesla before. crossover that's or happening not, there, I think when you were Sorry, one looking... at a time, please. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Stock talk, man, if I go? Yeah, yeah go for it, sorry. Go. Yeah, yeah. On, on the Twitter X Tesla crossover, and we're all power users of Twitter, Stock Market yeah. News, Stock Talk and I have been using it for years. We've been hosting like 40 hours of spaces a week. There was a lot of hope that when the acquisition happened that this could be a real synergy for Tesla, right? Who notoriously doesn't spend money on marketing and now has access to this incredible yeah. community. But of course, you know, there's there's been work that has to go into Twitter. There's been a lot of restructuring there. Are there active synergies that you see or ways that you see these crossing over in the coming months or years to really supplement each other? Well, I, I mean, Twitter, I, I mean, I and, and, and Tesla have long used Twitter, frankly, for free. To advertise Tesla, um, so you know, the, the, like my my account and the and the Tesla account have been incredibly effective in building awareness of Tesla and actually driving demand. Um, so, um, I think there probably are some some synergies there, uh, where you know, Twitter can be helpful, to, you know, perhaps even more helpful to to Tesla. Um, uh, it certainly has to, yeah, so. Um, hey, Elon, is there a way to connect our Tesla profiles to our Twitter profiles and get it in the car? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we, we could. Yeah, yeah, I think Twitter yeah. should be like the social graph of Tesla. Like, I want to go yes. in my nav system and say, okay, I want to meet up with Ross. So, like, yes. navigate us to this restaurant. We can see each other's location. That kind of and thing. I could see all the other Tesla owners driving around me that want their visibility shared, and we could con communicate through uh, through Twitter as the app. Um, yeah, that's a good point, actually. I'm th yeah, I mean, it would kind of make sense to uh, have have a Twitter app on on um, on Tesla. Um, yeah, yeah, we could listen to Spaces yeah. while we're supercharging. I was just supercharging actually, like a half an hour ago, and. You just sit there, you know, it's like perfect. I mean, Elon, yeah. Tesla is the biggest source of your wealth. When it comes to, to Twitter, I mean, these ideas are all great. These ideas are great. 
But does it make sense to have someone like, you know, David Sachs come in and help you manage Twitter? And are there like three candidates that you think would be really interesting to support you so that through this recession, you know, the focus can be more on Tesla? The focus will, <laughs> let me be clear, the focus will absolutely be, uh, prior, I mean, t t Tesla just fundamentally is a far more complex uh, beast than, than Twitter. Um, so the, the the things that are necessary to operate Twitter are just it's, it, are far fewer. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a subset of, 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 of Tesla uh, complexity. Um, you, you know, obviously, like, tw Twitter is like, it's got, you know, there's it's servers and and software and, and you know phone apps and stuff, and it's you know it's at scale and stuff. But it's uh, it is obviously a it's, it's the complexity is a, a, more than an order of magnitude lower than than Tesla. So it, my attention will be primarily on Tesla, uh, and, and I think I can s still you know uh, improve the Twitter product. Uh, because I, mean, I can, I use it a lot. So, um, you know, in terms of guiding the, the product to become better and better, that's like kind of a natural thing since I have been using Twitter actively for, you know, since 2009. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's basically not that hard to know what things need to improve and then give that direction to the team and have it, ha you know, get it done. So, yeah, it's, um, I don't want. I don't, I'm not trivializing Twitter, but it's just uh, objectively, um, it's a. It's it's like about ten, maybe ten percent of the complexity of of, of Tesla. So, um, music to our ears. A lot of investors are so happy to hear you say that, and I think it yes. helps you coming on this space and talking to people. Elon, I just want to ask you briefly about, about Tesla Super appreciate and, Super and the launch appreciate. of launch of Tesla electricity in Texas. Uh, you know, I'm a Texas resident as well. So, you know, I think that that's a pretty exciting additional vertical, maybe for Tesla from the utility perspective. If you just want to comment briefly on Tesla electricity and, and that starting up and, and your guys' outlook for, for Tesla electricity going forward, I think that'd be great to, to comment on. Uh, sure. Well, I mean, the overarching focus of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And one of the, and there's like just really three pillars to sustainable energy, which is sustainable energy generation, um, for, you know, primarily through wind and solar, um, and then storage of that energy, uh, stationary battery packs, uh, because of the intermittency of wind and solar, and then electric transport. And those are the three core pillars for a sustainable energy future. And we're working on all three. So, um, and, and I'd say like the demand for, large stationary battery packs, especially at the utility level, but, but also at the consumer level with Powerwall is like quasi infinite, like meaning like it's, uh, it's assuming the economics are, 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 are compelling to utilities for, you know, the, the, the uh, and, and so like, as long as like, say a Tesla battery pack is cheaper, all things considered than say a, a natural gas peaker plant, the, the demand is like gigantic, uh, and like, nobody's valuing that, are they? They're putting a value of zero on it. Um, I I don't know, but I wouldn't put a value of zero on it. Um, it it's it's but it, it is like, I mean, as I've said before, like like we really want to be doing, um, you know, a thousand plus gigawatt hours a year of battery packs, combined stationary and uh, and and vehicle, and, and if not two thousand, um, so you know it's big numbers. Um, at, at some point, like the, uh, I do eventually need to do this like mass plan part three. The mass plan part three is just about scale, and 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 just like people, just like one shouldn't even think of things in in terms of like uh, dollars. You, you need to think of things in terms of tonnage. Like what tonnage of of battery pack is needed? Like the fundamental rate limiter for humanity becoming self sustaining from an energy standpoint is how wh how, wh how many gigawatt hours per year of battery pack can you make? That 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 fundamentally sets the rate uh, at 
which uh, humanity can transition to sustainable energy is how, what, how many batteries can you make per year? Uh, at the ton, how, how many, what's the tonnage? <laughs> well, you know, in, terms, in storage terms, the how many thousands of gigawatt hours per year can can humanity make? That's the, the, and the the faster that's that ramps, the faster one can get to a sustainable future. And our rough back of the envelope for transitioning uh, civilization to a fully sustainable uh, energy economy is around uh, 300 terawatt hours, 300, 300 terawatt hours of installed capacity um, ish. I mean, other people may come up with different numbers, but it's it's not an order of magnitude higher than that, and it's not an order of magnitude lower than that. So we'll go to Monative next. Uh, Monative, I'm sure, is a great question. Monative, you've had your hand up for a while, and then we'll go to Earl as well, who's had his hand up. Monative, what's up? Uh, thanks, Talk Talk. Uh, Elon, I uh, want to take you back a little bit to the comment you made about uh, about Fed being behind the curve and and over tightening. So uh, I, I've been living in the valley here for you know close to 25, uh, 25 plus years now. So been through the thick and thin in the valley. So certainly it looks like we are heading to a to a tech jobs recession, if nothing else, and probably a white collar jobs recession and certainly a significant pullback in tech do you think that data is going to you know cause further contagion from top down at the highest income levels and is the fed going to see that and 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 take that into account because clearly the overall jobs market is fine at the lower level but certainly there's a lot of weakness at the higher level Um, sorry, I, 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 you blanked out there for a second. Can you repeat the question? Uh, sorry about that. So, so I was just saying, uh, you know, uh, to your earlier point about the Fed being behind the curve, right, we're, now, yeah. we're not seeing, you know, real jobs problem at the highest level within tech. The the high paying jobs are being lost at a furious pace. But but overall, job market seems to be fine because of the lower end jobs. Do you think the Fed is going to take that level of nuance into account before they go too far? Look, I don't know what the, I, I, my insight into, into the, the Fed's decision making is zero. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know any of the, anyone on any of the people on the Fed board. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever even spoken to them, so I I, I don't know what the Fed's going to do. Um, I've been surprised by the rate increases, and like I said, the the I think they're just they're looking at like data in a kind of a legacy way with with that, that where the data's got a lot of latency, um, more late, and and so then they're just making decisions uh, with with uh, data with data that's really uh, stale. Um, and not reflective of the current situation. Um, so um, that, that just means their reaction will be delayed. Um, so th they're uh, raising rates more than they should, and then they, they'll probably take longer to lower the rates than they should. That's based on the past track record. That makes perfect sense with structural unemployment. I mean, there, there are a million jobs without open, open immigration that we can't, we can't just make out it. We can't fill out a thin air. So, I tend to agree with you that this tightening could last longer. And, and Musk, you're not the only one. I mean, they're they're you know, the top hedge fund managers in the world. I mean, Tepa, Tepper was on TV this morning. I've never seen the guy this de depressed in the last 20 years. Wow. So, you know, he was the one in 2010 that was saying, "Hey, you know, QE, QE1, he went all in and you know built a 20 billion dollar organization." But, you know, even the best fund managers, prognosticators, no one has any idea on how this is going to play out. So all we can do is, you know, have our scenarios and, and play out various cases and, and manage for the manage risk for the best. Yeah. Um, Earl, you're up. Hey, thank you. Hello, Elon. Uh, long time shareholder, first time caller. Um, I have a, a quick question, but before I get to that, I would like to point out that when you put Floki in the front, Tesla was over $300 a share. I don't know if it was related 
but you might want to consider that to uh, pump the stock again. Um, on to my question. Um, I've always been a rabid fan. There's a lot of people who are similar to me, probably a little more liberal, very passionate about our Teslas, proud of our Teslas. And, um, you know, over the takeover of Twitter and uh, some of these comments, I think uh, some of us have been feeling a little bit disenfranchised, um, you know, still, still big fans, still shareholders. But, um, it, you know, some of the magic is missing a little bit there. Um, for example, I have a, a daughter or um, a, a daughter and then also a trans child. And they both were always very excited about our Tesla. We went and bought a Model X and um, now they have mixed feelings about it. You know, it's just like, you know, um, and it, it's not always directly related to what you say, but kind of some of the opinions or attention you draw to things like pronouns or something like that. And it's just, it's sad for me to watch that happen. And um, so I've tried to speak out about that. You know, it doesn't really go anywhere, but um, I, I do worry also as a shareholder about, you know, are we alienating certain people, not just extreme left people, but just kind of in the middle folks like myself that, um, you know, it's just added in some politics and controversy that um, takes away a little bit of the shine off of our Tesla. Um, now, I did sell my Model 3, but it was mostly because I live in Alaska. We're missing some chargers. I'm going to throw in a plug for that. But, um, you know, still a big fan. Like I said, still have our shares, you know, still love driving our Teslas around. But I do, I, I was just wondering if you've thought about that at all as you're, you know, taking on this big uh, Twitter job. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I'm not going to like sort of suppress my views. Uh, you know, so it's like, you know, it's just just to, just to boost the stock price. So I'm like, that's uh, like not going to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that's what he's saying, though, Elon. I, I, I think when you own a media property, there's this perception of independence that's expected from the owner. And the Wall Street Journal is owned by Rupert Murdoch, but he doesn't write the opinion pieces, even though we know it's his opinion. And so I think, <laughs> it, you know, so I think it, it sort of like throws people off that the owner has an opinion. Now, I, I don't think your opinions are extreme, but a lot of people in the media take what you say. And by the time the customers read it, it's not what you said at all. And, you know, I, I just think there's this big perception gap being driven on beliefs that aren't even yours, really, because you're saying something, you know, and I just think that part of it, it's almost like a trap that that don't, it's like a lose lose trap. And, and I hate seeing people get caught in that. I mean, Elon, do, you don't hate trans people, do you? Or what no, are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, of course not. Um, so uh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in general a hater of anyone, frankly. So, uh, but I, you know, I think that there's, you know, we, we, we the, the thing that, like, it does, it does bother me that that people will use like pronouns to be just be super judgmental. Um, and actually, this, I just have, I, to me, it feels like a lot of these things are, like, uh, just. Allow they're they're a shield that allow people to be assholes. They're like a moral shield that where they can they're, they just, it just gives them a an excuse to be an asshole, and, and that's that's what that bothers me. Um, so yeah, I get that, and it, but I think what happens real easily in the media is it just appears that you're like punching down to a really marginalized group. Like my kid is just trying to have like their pronoun used in school and stuff, and it's like you know then you have this really rich popular person like crapping on pronouns but it gets mixed up and it's like i think the people that you're talking about like it gets mixed up and then uh people just see it as a more broader thing that you're like you know being negative towards trans people but okay, i do so have to let's, ask let's, really, let's move on to this yeah yeah we got um, gary and chuck the, with hands up too. we're gonna go to we're gonna go to gov first who says hand up and then we'll go to yeah. gary 
I, I got just a simple question, Elon, because there's been a lot of this use of polls on Twitter. And as somebody, again, we're Twitter power users. We love that idea that we can have the opportunity to participate in major decisions that are going to affect us, right? Like my entire income comes from Twitter. Uh, with that being said, there's been a couple different ways around the polls. There's been thoughts, are the polls being used to root out bots? There's been polls that are, of course, you've uh, abided by. Um, there's been a tweet that polls would maybe just be available to Twitter blue users. I'm kind of curious if there's any clarity you can give on, you know, are these major decisions going to be made by polls? Can those polls be trusted? Do you have systems to get rid of potential botting? And then will those polls be available to everybody or just to Twitter blue users? Um, I think that is the subject of a debate. Um, the, 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 the challenge with the with polls, I mean, maybe it could be, you know, uh, open to uh, Twitter verified or, 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 you know, or all. The, the challenge with, with, with all is that it, it's like ridiculously cheap to ha get, uh, to buy like a bot army. Um, it's like less than a penny a bot. So, uh, you know, you can, it, it, like for not that much money, you can have 10,000 or 100,000 uh, bots all, uh, you know, participate in a poll um, and, and sh shift the direction of a poll. Now, the, the interest in shifting, like, it depends on, on how motivated is someone to uh, use a bot army to shift a poll. Um, and, and then often you'll see, like, basically what appear to be almost certainly warring bot armies, where, where two sides are both, both have bot armies, um, and they're trying to push a vote one way or the other. So I think in order to have a vote that it does not ha have a lot of bots and trolls, I think you you would have to restrict it to to uh, verified users. Otherwise, obviously, it's it's just it's just too cheap to scam the system. Elon, is there an easy I, way to kick out bots like intraday, like a recaptcha is a basic. I'm not an engineer by trade, um, but something like that, like intraday, kick everyone out, have them log back in, use a recaptcha or something like that, and just you know just push these bots off the platform over time. Yeah, I mean. Bot, bot is maybe not necessarily the the right word um, because th th there are bots like th th like there's degrees. There's a purely automated situ situation which uh, where, where capture would have some value. Um, although, you know, really, uh, AI like free readily available AI is getting to the point where it's you know, <laughs> it's, it's certainly going to get to the point where it's better than humans at reading a capture, not worse. Um, so. So, so, like the value of a capture is just diminishing over time. Um, then there's the situation where you, where they're not actually bots; they're they're people. But like somebody's got like a warehouse somewhere, you know, um, where there's like uh, ten thousand phones. You know, you've got like a hundred people, or uh, for I can say, hundred people each operating a hundred phones. So that's not a bot, and they can all perform the capture. So there's, there's a whole bunch of that going on. In fact, you can see pictures of that on the internet. You could Google it. So um, th there's, there's not like some easy way to get around this, is what I'm saying. Um, it's really difficult. Um, that's, why I, that's why I use bots and trolls. It's like bots are cheap, but trolls are also pretty cheap, um, like a troll farm. So I think uh, you, really to have a high quality poll you have to have some verification, and that verification has to, you know, I think, um, in increase the cost, of, the effective cost of having a water troll, you know, by an order of magnitude or more. Like, so if it, if it costs, like, a, let's say a penny for a troll vote, um, now if, if, if that's, um, instead they're paying, like, eight or 10 bucks, now you've increased the, the effective cost um, by 10,000, or sorry, by a thousand, I should say, uh, roughly. So that, that, that makes it much harder to scan. Um, anyway, I, 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 I gotta get back to work here, guys, speaking of work. Um, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for your You're time, welcome, Elon. Sir. Yeah, thanks, Elon, really appreciate it. Really yeah. Do. Thank you, Elon, like, thank you. I guess my, like my plotting words were like this, stormy weather ahead, but then it's going to be sunshine thereafter. <laughs> Elon, Elon, uh, the Elon and, uh, come on more of these Tesla spaces. Yeah, that would be great. Shareholders love you. They love hearing from you. And it's like sure. really, I think, great for sentiment. So come on more of these spaces with us. And 
Uh, we'll make sure that we give you a good blend of hard questions and easy ones as well. <laughs> All right, Neil, when's good. the 11 coming? What's your best guess? Um, well, we had hopefully, hopefully, uh, before the end of the year, uh, I mean, we're on B11.2 with the limited beta. Um, but so it's probably like, I don't know, 11.3. It's, it's pretty soon. It's not like far away. Uh, it's, it's measured in single digit, like, you know, uh, sort of in this roughly. <laughs> nice. That's exciting. Well, yeah, the before. existing version's amazing. It's been driving me around with no takeovers most of the time. Yeah. Um, the, like the thing about the B11 is like, there are a bunch of uh, neural nets that are architecturally much better than than 1069, but but they uh, like like they've got much more room to improve. Like like the, 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 like it's, you know we we just Autopilot has been going through like a series of local maximums, and so but w when you uh, um, exit local maximum, you first go down before you go up. Um, and so the the neural net architecture in V11 is is actually a, a, a much better, but uh, it, it it just takes time to um, uh, it, it hone the details. Um, but it's it's like I mean it, it I, when I, I it's rare for 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 me to intervene at this point when I drive around. It's like so it's surprising to to like. The vast majority of trips that I take on autopilot are no zero intervention. So, it bodes well for the future. Chuck, do you have anything to say before he goes? Hey, Elon, thanks for making yourself available. I was just going to say, first of all, thank you for working on hard problems and hard problems such as the unprotected left turn. Do you think that many of the hard problems are going to need that much effort? Do you think it's going to generalize across? Uh, you know, the, the space, I, I know V11 is a, is a good example of that. I'm just curious if you think that they're going to have to put that much effort towards a lot of these corner cases, or if that was just a good example of how to put engineers to work to, to create a solution, both in the simulator and in real life. I mean, this will just be my last, last answer, but the, 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 the we're, with every new architecture of, um, every new neural, neural net architecture is more generalized than the last time. So, so it actually ends up solving not just, say, uh, ex extended unprotected lefts, but it ends up ex solving a whole bunch of things. Um, so it's it's not like it, it's it's actually uh, with, with with each major rev, there's more and more generalization of solving what is effectively the real world AI problem. And Tesla is, as far as I can tell, overwhelmingly the best at real, way, real world AI. Um, and we're, our rate of progress is increasing. So, all right, with that, uh, it's good talking to you guys and uh, look forward to talking again. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Cheers, man. Thank here. you, sir. Take care. Right. Bye. Thank you, Yvonne. That was awesome to have him. I mean, wow! Awesome, Hell awesome. yeah! Wow. So many, wow. so many, that so many so answers. Needed. Um, the Tesla shareholders need. We made the stock go up. I think. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We did. We definitely made the stock go up. <laughs> stock went up like two percent. There we go. Someone Thanks for plugging in the V11 question, Omar. That was really good. I mean, I, I think you guys. I have to speak for too. the people. The people want to know where V11 is. Yeah, I mean, and, and what I heard is maybe uh, there's some stuff to work. It didn't sound hard. good. It yeah, not, didn't. No, they're they're working on it, but this it sounds like still 2023 so good right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say for everyone that's in here, obviously we had like what sixty thousand people in here live at the peak. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following the great host that hosted this space. Um, that brought us up to your stock market news is obviously a fantastic source of news. Um, make sure you're following Holes Mars blog, who is probably the, the best Tesla content guy on Twitter, always dropping full self drive videos. And make sure you're following me too. You know, I do talk about Tesla too. And all the rest of the panel, uh, special situations Gov, Gary, Ross, Rob, Mar, uh, Chuck, Eli, everyone that was up here, and everyone that came in throughout the space. So thanks guys for that. But I mean, we're going to continue the conversation, I imagine. So. Um, yeah, uh, feel, feels like we have, 
feels like we have so much to go. You know, I'd love to hear your opinion on these uh, margin on on the margin sales today. Yeah. 